Well, hey, all. I guess we're live. I'm trying out the uh, Podbeam live app, and I thought, well, maybe I can record while I'm on my way to work. I have no clue what the audio will be like. I, I think I tried this once before, but I've had a lot going on in my squirrely little brain, so, uh, so maybe it got all fucked up. We'll see if anybody hops on. I, uh, I might be able to read any comments that if somebody um, joins in or however you do that or leaves a comment. I think I can see comments. I have no clue. We're in the dark and it's morning. It happens to be when uh, Tuesday morning and I got to go to work and do some stuff, which I have to admit totally sucks. So, anyway, I hope uh, you all had a happy, wonderful Independence Day. Um, everybody in my town or city were pissed because we did it on the 3rd and not the 4th, even though the 2nd. Oh, my God. Okay, well, um, I don't know if we're still live or not. That was weird. I tried to switch over to answer a call, and uh, it shut everything off on my phone because Androids suck. 
it still shows that we're five minutes into this process. So maybe you got to listen to me talk uh, on uh, on my uh, phone to my wife, who we're having problems. Uh, all right. So anyway, back to whatever it was I was talking about, which I had no clue what that was. Um, been frustrated lately with uh, the politics of things and everything. Like I said, happy Fourth of July. Hope you all enjoyed that. Got to meet with John Jeffers in person from Contra Radio Network. Um, he was in town. He lives in the great state of confusion called uh, Iowa, or no, Illinois. And uh, on vacation, swung by uh, Arizona, and then he's going to hit Texas, and then I don't know what else he was going to do. Hopefully we can get him to move out here because uh, Illinois is a madhouse. And now they're they're pushing for some vaccine task force thing and stuff. So which will happen to all of our states. I've been listening to Mike Adams more on the Health Ranger Report, Brighteon.com. Um, not his social site, because there's Brighteon Social, I think. And then there's just Brighteon.com. And that's spelled B-R-I-G-H-T-E-O-N.com. Um and, you know, he's been covering matters of shit hitting the fan quite well. And he's highly educated and he definitely more articulate than I will ever be. I can say for a, a fact on that one. And so I've just kind of been saying, fuck it, fighting with the city still. Um, almost got the power uh, moved. <laughs> to the new service and then I can get rid of a ugly ass uh, power pole in my yard that blocks my view from my new porch that I built. So it's, it's moving along and uh, I'm, I'm trying to start a group to where it's, well, it already is on Facebook called uh, defund bureaucracy, which is a private group. And I was going to make it public, but I started it as a private group just for my community. And then when I wanted to switch it to a uh, public, then it said you can't because of the privacy of your existing members. So just jump on there on Facebook, uh, defund bureaucracy and uh, ask to join. And I will let you join because I, you know, I think this is important information for everyone, even though it started out as my gripe with the city, my local city, and county government and all the things that are going on. So uh, I'd like to take it nationwide. Maybe I'll even change it to a different name and a new group and delete that one. Fuck, I don't know. Hardly even care. Um, so I've been working on how we can uh, maybe see most cities and counties are financially weak, I guess would be the word. Can't say they're broke, even though. If they actually did real accounting practices, they would find out they are broke. Um, but they're weak. And I think what we need to start doing is, you know, and God, I hate even saying this, but, you know, Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals had a few good tactics, even though they were used for bad and nefarious purposes. If you think about it, you know, if you overwhelm the system, then you can you can really cause some problems and maybe bring about some change, and 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 that was one thing I kind of agreed with because the system is so big, and so cumbersome and so corrupt, and they've usurped so much, not real authority, you know, just assumed authority, but but they don't have you know legal authority because it's not in the constitution what any of the shit that they're doing. Um, and so on a local level, if you really look at it, you know, your city and your county, and you consider how financially fucked they are most of the time, you might have a, a, a chance if you start really putting pressure on them. Like there's certain things a city has to do before they can pass an ordinance, especially if there's fines or permits or um penalties then there has to be a community 
uh, workshops. They have to have a call to action. They have to, you know, and input from the people at the council meetings. They need to really gather a lot of information. And if they don't do that, like in my uh, city, we're back in 1997, they didn't get the, the, you know, they didn't put, even put it on the agenda that they were going to vote on this. And so when they did, even though they had workshops and all that, because it wasn't posted properly and put on the onto an agenda, what ended up happening is the judge said, well, your, your code is void. Now, that hasn't stopped the city from enforcing it since 1997 until there was a legal case, you know, where the judge actually came out and said, why are we here? Basically, you, ha you have no code. You know, you can't enforce something that does not exist. But that hasn't stopped the city from continuing even from that moment, even though it cost them, cost them close to a million dollars, you know, after all was said and done because the, the guy won the case. Now, there were a lot of extenuating circumstances with it. It was a mobile home park, and those fall under different laws than, um, you know, private property. But they, they actually shouldn't if you own the property. But, they, you know, the state tries to divide things up. It's like, well, you own a mobile home park, so blah, blah, blah. But it, it's either way, it's, it's, it's a different, you know, type of clusterfuck. And, and so, you know, he won. And yet, do you see the city even, you know, trying to give a shit about it? Come on, you dumb fucking phone. Um, or not. No, none of the cities are trying to rectify their problems. My city was told straight up by a judge that they had no authority what they were doing. And yet they're just like, well, we'll just see, you know, if, if, if we find enough stupid people and enough stupid people pay the fine, then. We, we are right by virtue of the fact that, you know, 50 billion flies eat shit, so why won't you? And that is the, the logic, and there's a legal term for it, but we all understand what I mean. It, it sets a precedence. But in a, in a constitutional republic like we have with a constitution, just because a lot of people have been being duped does not mean that they have authority now to continue to dupe us. And so it was, I, I watched a really good movie. I'm going to recommend it to all of you. It's, it's, you know, maybe an hour and something. And it's free. And it's called noncompliantmovie.com. Go and listen to it. It's by uh, Chris Ann Hall. And she makes a good point. She goes, if I, if I know you're going out of town on vacation, and the minute you leave, I go to your house and steal your car. And I know you're going to be gone for a month. And I drive that car for a whole month. And everybody in town sees me driving that car. They start to assume that maybe that's my car. Maybe I bought a car just like yours. And, and they don't know that I, I stole it. Do I have the authority to drive it? No. Do I have the authority to sell it? No. And when all said and done and you come home and you're like, hey, where's my fucking car? You just go, oh, well, like, you know, they've had it for a month or a week or five days. Doesn't matter. I guess it's theirs now. No, you don't do that. Do you need to sue me to get your car back? Well, no. Why? Because it's your car. Why would you have to sue me? What you do is you go down to the sheriff's department because they're the ones that are not morons most of the time. You could go to the police, but they're fucking morons. And since we're talking about, you know, ordinances in a city and this assumed authority, not really a car, you would go to the sheriff and you'd go, hey, here's my title. Here's proof that I own this vehicle and, I th and, it, and it's been stolen. I want it back. You don't have to tell him you think that Mark stole it. Maybe you don't know. I have no clue, but you're just going, well, it's gone. Go find it. I didn't report it stolen a month ago because I was out of town. I didn't know. And the sheriff will go and, you know, put out an APB, a bolo, whatever. And, uh, and they will find your car and get it back for you. Now, if I'm a dumbass, I'm still driving it around thinking that, hey, this is my car now. Nobody said nothing. So it's mine. Is it mine? Just because no one said it or you didn't report it 
Is there a, a statute of limitations on it that, that I didn't report it stolen until the day I found out, which is a month later? No. So I'm just, uh, maybe I'm a dumbass just driving around when the cop pulls me over. It's like, what? This is my car. Um, you know, what the hell? But it's not, is it? I don't have to go to court to show a judge that it's my car. Sheriff arrests me as the person that stole your car and then gives you your car back. Because that's how it works. So with all of this uh, assumed authority, cities are now doing things that they think they have a legal constitutional right to do. I just pulled up my house again because our job, my thing I was going to do today canceled. So I'm going to walk around with this and just see how it works so I can get a good sense of the audio and everything. And I'll continue to rant and rave and be a little fucking whiny bitch. Um, so this is how it works with authority, with the city or the county or the state, or the feds, but we're talking local here. So all in all now, you don't have to sue to get your your rights back. Now, I was thinking when I listened to this on a non, I think it's called The Non-Compliant Movie or just noncompliantmovie.com. Either one, try it, find it, you know. Um, I listened to that and I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, cities been wasting my time for uh, practically two fucking years now. Do I really need to even go to court? I mean, they haven't drugged me to court yet other than the one time when I said not guilty. And then we've been dealing with uh, um, I mean, been dealing with, you know, pre-trials. You know, and then the city's like, well, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? And could you perhaps maybe call this person and say, you know, I, I'm really not guilty of anything yet because we haven't really gone to court. So why would I do any of that other than to what, uh, you know, bear, you know, testimony against myself? It's like a cop asking you to step out of your car and walk a straight line. Well, you are now testifying against yourself. You don't have to do that. So you could you know, tell the officer with all due respect, uh, I, you know, I refuse to incriminate myself. I stand on my Fifth Amendment right. And, you know, if he's a smart cop, he'll go, well, well you must be drunk if you're going to use that defense. It's like, no, I just have the right, you know, to not walk a straight line, not to talk, testify against myself, not to try to say the alphabet back. And, and I have reasons that you cannot shine your light in my eye or do anything. Either, you know, book me right now for DUI. You know, and take me in and, and draw blood or let me go. Well, see, now you've put a lot of burden on that police officer. He's like, yeah, this guy's smart enough. I just don't want to fuck with it. You know, I'm, I'm on break in 20 minutes or my shift ends in another 20 minutes. It's like, I'll spend the rest of the night at the fucking jail. Forget it. Get out of here. Slow down. You know, now if you you know do something and give some more probable cause, he might pull you over and then go, okay, you know, I followed you for a mile, and you, I, whether you're drunk or just a mental patient, I don't care. Get in the back of my car. I'm, I'm I'm booking you. I'm taking the time to book you. You know, but put that on them. So this is all on the city right now. See, it's it's on them. So when they're asking me, uh, well, Mark, uh, why don't why don't you do this? Why don't you call that guy? And why don't you? Do that. It's like, well, I, you know, you haven't proven to me that I need to do any of that right now for any fucking reason. So why would I? So I'm thinking, you know, maybe I ought to call my sheriff and go, hey, I have a problem. I have a city government trying to take my property. Now, legally, what they're doing would fall under a, a taking. It's It's a it's, 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 there's a word for it. It's it's uh, it's not a physical taking. Like they come in and condemn my property or build a road across it through eminent domain. It, it's a, a regulatory taking. That's the word, regulatory. So by their actions telling me I need to get a permit 
and I need to stop working on my house. Well, then they've, they've, they've basically told me, stop doing what you're doing. This is now our property. We're taking your right to use your private property. We're taking your property. Not completely. I'll still be stuck with the taxes and the payments, if any, and all that bullshit, and the insurance, and just in case someone gets hurt. But the reality is they've, they've now taken my property. And, and so that is a, is a, a thing that is uh, illegal. Ah. Entering the live studio, Tron Cat. Well, welcome aboard. I think you can comment. I'm on my cell phone and I've never used this app, so I, I have no clue. <laughs> but it showed me that you're here. So awesome blossom. So I, I thought, well, that might be, you know, a legal thing. And getting to my my thing about cities and counties being, you know, practically bankrupt. But they're not. They're just financially weak. Um, so I'm already wasting the city's time. Like the city lawyer told me, she goes, I'm a fixed cost, you know, here or liability. It doesn't cost the city anymore whether I'm hassling you or not. Well, yes, you are. But, you know, that's exactly what you are. You're a fixed liability. And me, the taxpayer in the town, pays your salary whether you're harassing me or my neighbor. But like I told her, I said, well, I could, I could string the city along for, you know, five years, 10 years. You know, I know enough political and legal wrangling that I could, I could tie the city up for quite a while. I go, and let's say at the end of 10 years, I go, ah, you, you know what? You're right. Here's uh, here's the fee for the permit. And, I, I see there's a $250 fine. Here you go. Can they can they double it or triple it because I pissed them off? <laughs> no, they can't. So it doesn't cost me one dime more to harass the shit out of them. And it costs them money every time I appeal or do something. Especially if I pull her away from other things that are way more pressing. And I've explained that to her. I go, I'm sure you have bigger fish to fry than me and you could deal with certain crimes that are actually real and so if if you talk to me for an hour every month that's one hour that you could have done something useful with your time so isn't it you know a cost benefit for them to not waste their time fucking with me well it would be if they were you know weren't stupid and they actually had a a budget and break even points like a real business, you know, but they don't. Um, so I guess they don't see it financially like a business would see this, the city, my city who's financially hurting. I mean, they, they make their budget every year, but that's just, you know, financial bullshit. The reality is they, they lose 120 to 150,000 a year because they own the golf course. Now, the golf course is a nice golf course. It was designed by Arnold Palmer and blah, blah. Who the fuck cares? Because I don't play golf. But they, they, they own it, and they own the restaurant and the bar. So I'm thinking to myself, well, if, if I was a private business owner and I owned a golf course that was costing me 150000 a year, I might want to look at my business model and go, what the fuck am I doing wrong here? But see, they don't do that because they don't care. I'm paying for it. My neighbor's paying for it. If you lived in this town, you're paying through, through your taxes. It becomes a budget item. So when my son comes here to, you know, to visit and he goes and plays 18 holes just on a day off and he's screwing around and he has to walk to the clubhouse to buy a beer because the, the beer cart is not operating. And he's like, where's the beer girl? Uh, he called her the beer bitch, which everyone does that plays golf. But either way. Um, and they go, oh, well, we sent her home because it was slow. And he goes, well, that's fucking stupid because there's me and five or six other people out there playing golf at, you know, $5 a beer. You could probably make some money since you're broke and all. And they're like, now nah, we're probably going to close the, the bar today. So uh, in the restaurant. So, you know, grab a couple beers, you know, go back to game and leave us alone. So d d does the city that owns a business, 
give two flying shits about break-even points, return on investment, no. So it's the same thing with these these legal things. So if you want to, you know, start to put a hurt on them, go to every town council meeting. If they open it to the public, talk for your two, three minutes. Don't be an asshole, but talk. Don't make accusations you can't back up. Don't be a moron like the last two biz, the council meetings that I watched online. You know, we have a Vision Quest business here in town that's, uh, if you don't know, it's kind of like a home for indigent kids, boys and girls, kind of like the Boys and Girls Club, but it's called Vision Quest. And uh, so um, it's telling me people are entering, which is awesome, but uh, I don't know if there's any comments. If there are, I'm really sorry I'm not seeing them, but hey, welcome to the party. Um, leave a comment. Maybe and maybe it'll pop up here somewhere and I'll go, oh, holy shit, it works. So there's Vision Quest here and they're bringing in these illegal um, 12, 13, I don't know what their age limit is. And they're bringing them in in the city council. Everyone's like, this is sedition. This is treason. You guys are violating your oath of office. And it turns into a, a very pathetic pissing match. And the city council just listens because they know for a fact that they are not being treasonous, that the federal government has deemed these kids legal American citizens by virtue of whatever magic wand they have. And so the city's hands are tied. You know, they're, they're just, you know, Vision Quest is making money and that's, I guess, good for the town. But, they're, you know, they're not doing anything illegal. You know, the problem is at the border and if the people talking at the city council meeting, you know, would, would put their thinking cap on, they'd go, oh, holy shit, we need to take this up with the, the, the Border Patrol. So start, you know, getting up talking, taking, you know, two or three of your friends with you and, and drag that meeting on until they go, okay, that's, that's it, enough from the audience. But bring up points. And, and my thought was, ask good questions. It's like, you know, um, regarding blah, blah, blah. A lot of them are just open for them, so you can just chit chat. You go, um, when when you folks ran for office, you said you were going to do this, that, and the other thing. And, and what I'm seeing here is like with, with planning and zoning, your the charter of planning and zoning is to make our community safer and better. And and I haven't seen that. I've seen the city, you know, chasing these big developers all around with you know their hat in hand, looking to get some money from them, but. When it comes to the original part of the town, you know, the, the old town or whatever, you, want, you know, it's in your area, you know, um, you've just blown us off. And yet you got these Gestapo brown shirts running around trying to beat a fee out of me. And so um, I looked into it and the state constitution says you can't do that because of this proposition or that proposition. And a lot of state constitutions have a little bit more stricter rules now with you know, taking away people's private property because of the Kilo decision. Not all of them. You know, most of them are still pushovers and want to steal your land because it's Agenda 21. My state has a Private Property Rights Protection Act, which was passed overwhelmingly, you know, by um, the state. And so it's a done deal. So it's like, so according to this, this, and this, be polite. Go, um, it looks like you guys are, you know, um, doing something not questionably right. And, and then the judge said in this one case about this. And so I, I just want to know, you know, what are you planning on doing about it? Thank you for your time. Set the fuck down. Now you're, you're see, now you've, you've brought a question to the city council that, you know, by legal authority, they have to kind of start answering it. You know, maybe not right then. They might say, well, we'll look into it. But then if your friend jumps up and goes, yeah, I got, you know, I got a question similar to that. You know, the other day I had the guy from planning and zoning or Dick with the badge, you know, show up and, uh, you know, walking around my property, inspecting things. And, and, and that's trespassing. Um, I don't know about you, but if this happened on your property, whether you're in the city or the county, I would imagine knowing most of uh, you folks being, uh, you know, hardcore uh, freedom loving Americans, as you say you were when you were running for office and that you're small government small town kind of people and and that you were gonna you know fight to eliminate this bureaucracy uh, I, I don't I don't see that happening um, why is this guy giving you know 
think he has the authority to trespass. You know, I I could have I could have shot him, if, you know, or something. I you know if I had, uh, you know, if I hadn't seen him or what was going on, or I felt threatened, you know, which would have been a, a nightmare for you and for me, and for the legal system. So what you know, what are we going to do about this? You know, um, you, you, you know, according to you know Mark over here or Bob or John Doe that just commented, you know, it's like, what are you going to do about this? We we need some answers. Can we? get together a workshop or something and figure this out. And and then, you know, the rest of the crowd, you know, from what I've noticed in my town is everyone's sick of the bullshit. Everybody, you know, even people who work for the city think it's bullshit. Their family thinks it's bullshit. So you have a, a, a pretty big contingency of people that think, you know, this oppressive planning and zoning bullshit that was started a hundred and some years ago to keep black people out of white neighborhoods, which is exactly why it was created, you know, has morphed into this bureaucratic red tape laden pile of shit that keeps you and I from actually doing what we want to do with our property. And therefore that makes it a taking. So start to harass them, write them letters. You have a friend at the newspaper, um, Ask them, what do you got to do to write an op-ed or a letter to the editor? And can I do that every week? You know, and, and if I do it this way, you know, what's the format? What do I got to do? Um, is there a local radio station in your town or in your area that represents or, you know, it's airwaves blast into your town? It's like, is there a, a you know, a, a portion of your show that deals with community interest? You know, kind of like a public service announcement has to be broadcast every so often, you know, according to the FCC. You know, can I talk to somebody about, you know, getting this out there? Can we have an interview, you know, like our local radio station? You know, the owner is also the DJ that talks about things that are important to him. Now, he's a crazy man, and, and he's a libtard from New York. But he's being harassed by the city as well. And so, you know... Even though his politics might be diametrically opposed to mine, when it comes to this issue of property, he is in the same boat as I am. Therefore, we should kind of work together to bail the water out of the boat. And, and so do you want to take it to that level? Now, I've, I've still got the city at bay. I'm a firm believer in that whether you're right or wrong, when it goes to court, it can go sideways on you really quick. And, and I find it uh, almost entertaining to, to jerk these ass cats around for almost two years now and watch them go, what are we going to do about Mark? And, and it's, it's, to me, it's kind of fucking funny, you know, because they really don't know what to do with me regarding this case. And it's evident by the things they're asking me to do. And apparently... I've made it clear to some of the, the, the city council members that, you know, you don't want to take this to court. You really don't want to pursue this issue because here's the law. And what happens is if you win, then you've, you, the court will order me to stop work. That is blatant taking, regulatory taking, which gives me the legal authority in my state to turn around and file a diminution of value which means that because I can't do what I bought this property for to do, like remodel my house or build a bed and breakfast or whatever it is, they, through their permit and their land use laws, have stopped me from using my property as I bought it or intended. So I could file a six, $700,000. The amount is really irrelevant. They have to answer it. And the beauty of it in my state, which I would recommend all patriots read that, go to the Goldwater Institute that wrote the bill in the state of Arizona and got it passed and see if you can get something similar in your state. And there's a couple perspectives on how it was written and, and how it answered some of the problems, because I think somewhere in Portland or somewhere, um, they had done the same thing. Was it Washington or Oregon? I don't know. They had done the same bill, but it was retroactive back as far as they wanted to, and therefore it was bankrupting the state. So immediately they, they suspended that. So Arizona worded it differently, 
and, and put limits on it, how long it could you know, be after you bought the property. And, and so, but the beauty of it is, let's say I, I, I'm not within that window. I really can't remember because, you know, it's been a while, but, but I, I file a $700,000 devaluation of property. It's called diminution of property. Now the city has to answer that. If they don't, then I win by default. So they have to go to state court on their dime and prove beyond the preponderance of proof that they're right, which they're not going to do. I mean, I've read legal briefs on it. It's, it's a high bar, very high bar. It's almost like for civil, it's the same as beyond reasonable doubt is with criminal. It's a high bar and, 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 and they're not, they're not going to waste the money. So once again, I'm, I'm costing the city money just by, by filing that. They have to do something now. Now they have to take their precious time and either go to state court or agree I'm right and work with me, which the law and the Constitution says they have to work with me. And then they'll probably do what I've asked them to do, which is just to waive enforcement on my property. No one's right. No one's wrong. Everybody walks away keeping their honor intact. But they keep going, no, no, no. But I think they're getting ready for some terms of surrender. So this is how we do it, because see, if they have to go to court, let's say they, they, they win in the city, the state Supreme Court says, no, um, you had the right to do that. You know, Mark, you're burning tires and, and, and storing used lithium batteries. That's definitely a health hazard to your neighbor and the water table. So no. But other than those reasons or making meth or running a house of prostitution, there's like five or six rules that, you know, that they can enforce by. But I, I don't fall under that. You know, adding on to my house is not, you know, illegal activities, illicit activities. It's not drug activities. It's not environmental dangerous activities. So they'll lose. Well, then, you know, let's say I, you know, they, they talked to me and negotiated down to, you know, $100,000. Well, they're still out a hundred fucking thousand dollars. And like I've told the city council members that I know, I will take every dime, whether it's a thousand dollars or a million dollars, and use it to continue to sue them. Because once I've proven I'm right, now what they've done to me for the last two years is threats and intimidation. That's a whole nother lawsuit, see? And I got their money to fight them with. I don't want to do that. And I love my community and I love the town and I want them to spend the million dollars they have earmarked for some more sports. Uh, you know, like baseball fields and lights and stuff because my wife plays softball. I really can care less, but I do like the park and I think it's cool and it's good for the kids. So I don't want to dip into their, oh, fuck fund because they screwed with the wrong guy. But I'm not one of those people that, you know, when I shake my rattle, that if someone continues to tread on me, I will strike and it will be lethal. So, I've made it clear to them, but they're, they're just too fucking stupid to listen. So my thought is just start at your local level. Find your pet peeve, whatever it is, and, and research it. Look into it. Most state constitutions have a section on, you know, uh, city government for dummies, basically. And, and it's all on how municipalities can be created and incorporated cities and blah, 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 and how it operates under the state authority that is constitutional. And so you just read it. It's like a traffic ticket. Cop gives you a traffic ticket, says, you know, revised statute 1516-2A. Okay, so then you type that number in to your Google, and it will bring up mine would be Arizona revised statute, ARS. Let's say it's 1021 whatever, you know, section two, paragraph A. That's all it's talking about. Paragraph A. It's not talking about B, C, or D. It's A. You, you didn't stop your vehicle at a stop sign, or you put up a fence without, you know, kissing the ring or whatever it is. You look that up and you study it. If you got a friend that's a lawyer, talk to him. If you just have a, you have to do a consultation with a lawyer. I'm not saying give him a bunch of money, but like a, a free or $200 consultation, if it's something worthwhile. 
and go, how can I, uh, how can I do this? You know, what, what are they saying? You know, can, you know, you know, dumb this down Barney style for me to understand what the fuck they're saying. And then he goes, well, what this ticket is saying is you were driving a boat illegally within a federal lake because say the cop wrote it down wrong, which happened to my son years ago. He said he was driving a boat on Patagonia road. It's a fucking road. How do you drive a boat on a road? And the judge just looked at it and laughed and he goes, well, you can't drive a boat on the, on the, on the side streets case dismissed. So you, you do it, but it see now when you take that to court, you think, well, I won. Ha ha. You know, but did anyone get hurt? No. Well, maybe. But see, judges really get sideways when police officers in a town write stupid fucking tickets that waste their time. And if you show up and the policeman didn't show up that wrote you that ticket, the judge is going to be pissed. He might not show it to you. But after a while, the same cop starts keeps doing that silly nonsense. And you can, you know, you can ask. Uh, John Jeffers about that. You know, he's a retired sheriff. Um, if you keep doing stupid shit, the judge is eventually going to talk to you and go, if you keep bringing this crap and wasting my fucking time and then not showing up, it must not have been important. So don't let me see it do it again, or I might write you a ticket for contempt or whatever the judge can think of. And they got all kinds of words they can use, right? So it did cost somebody some money. It did put someone on notice, whether it's a over oppressive policeman or trooper or whatever, you know, it, it, it just, somebody got mad. The judge got mad. I've had, ju I've had cases thrown out of court because the officer that wrote me the ticket was five fucking minutes late. The judge just didn't have time for it. It's like, I got a full docket, case dismissed. And that was it. I went home, saved two, $300 or whatever the hell it was. Whatever I was allegedly doing. See, and that's what we forget. It's allegedly. As long as you keep your fucking mouth shut, it's allegedly. So all my friends are like, Mark, when you go to court, tell the, tell the, the, the prosecutor this, tell her that. It's like, why the fuck would I do that? This is not, the ball is not in my court. I'm not going to go over there and show them how to serve the ball to my side. And then while I'm over there, they serve it and I missed the shot because I was stupid. See, it's in, that's what it means. The ball is in their court. They brought these charges for me. I said not guilty. Their job at pretrial is to go, here's the evidence against you, Mark. Do you understand how bad this will be? We have testimony from your brother and your mother that you shot that guy. See, that's what it turns into. Or we know that you built without a permit. And we know all this. And then they hand you all this information. You go, okay, thank you for the discovery. I'll see you in court. Set a date. Douchebag. Or, you know, like my city, they just go, well, here's the case against you, which I, duh. I kind of know it, but that doesn't mean they've given me my discovery yet. They just go, here's, here's why we're rubbed raw. You know, we're, we're mad at you, damn it. We don't like you. So what do you, what do you, what do you what the fuck you do? Well, I just sat back and laugh and, and get, you know, one hour every month of free educational services in, in the law, in the legal system. Now, if they want to, you know, so I looked up everything that's on the court document. It says I didn't get a permit, which I know I didn't, duh, because I don't have to. And uh, something about International Building Code, which I explained to them, being nice, that International Building Code pertains to residential housing and commercial only, even though it's called a residential building code, it has to do with contractors building housing projects for the safety of the fucking community, not my private yard. Well, they disagree with me. So I understand that they disagree, but legally they're wrong. They're just flat out wrong. I can quote cases after cases that they're wrong in court, not to them because I'd just be wasting my time and, and showing my cards. So their case falls apart on so many levels that it's amazing, but yet, they continue to pursue it, and I continue to go to court, and I continue to learn. Now, a lot of my friends go, Mark, how do you even put up with this shit? And it's like, well, 
I go, I look at learning the legal system this way and through study, spending a couple hours a week just Googling shit so I understand how the legal system works. I'm learning the legal system. Now, I know people that spend a lot of money learning self-defense. You know, I'm a red belt, black belt, green belt, whatever the fuck. I take, you know, mixed martial arts so I can defend myself. I do this and I do that. Well, you know, I was raised, you know, the only white kid in my school. I lived in a predominantly Hispanic and black neighborhood when I was growing up. And I've, I've never been, uh, you know, mugged, threatened, or attacked. Now, I, I'm lucky. Let's say that, you know, an average person has the odds of being, you know, attacked, maybe either violently or just being robbed, you know, once in a 20-year period or whatever the statistics are. How many times have you been to court? You know, traffic tickets, uh, city ordinance violations, uh, disturbing the peace. Um, you know, they, you know, you get in an argument with your wife at the park, and you're, you're just talking about the kid. I mean, it's not like you're you're like knock down, drag out. You know, she pulls out a butcher knife and tries to stab you. I'm just saying you're just arguing a little loud, and one of these woke tar bitches. Goes, well, I'm offended, and they called the police. Well, you, now you're going to go to court for disturbing the peace. You're going to get a ticket. That's a couple hundred dollars right there. So do you fight it? Well, of course you do. And what do you use to fight that attack? The legal system. So I've, I've been in court and dealt with legal issues probably 20, 30 times in my life, ranging from just not having a front plate on my car you know, which you know used to be a thing back then. So nobody entered the live studio. Nobody. No, you shouldn't. Nobody. JK. I don't know what. I guess these are comments. So I, I'm getting something. Somebody typed in here. Nobody entered the live studio. I don't know what that means. And then it's. Uh, no, you shouldn't. And then, then there's some hearts by somebody called JK. Well, thank you. So if, if you understand, you know, if you're catching what I'm pitching here, I mean, I'm not saying you don't need to learn gun safety. I'm not saying you don't learn maybe a, have your wife take a, you know, very localized self-defense class, you know, how to scream, how to yell, how to fight back, how to you know, drop your foot down on this arch of his foot, run like hell. These are all things that are fairly common sense. Even a cat knows how to, you know, fight like a crazy person, even though it's never taken Taekwondo. But the reality, being mugged, and unless they got a gun and they shoot you because you don't have enough money in your wallet, it's not going to take away your liberty or your freedom. But you get five or six tickets that were bullshit and you knew they were bullshit, but now you have so many points against your license that you don't have a driver's license. So you have to go to work because you got to feed your four kids and then you get pulled over. Now you're going to jail. You have lost your liberty. You've lost your liberty to work. You might have to pay 10 times more uh, money in legal fees just because um, you didn't fight it. And in fighting these things on a local level, it costs them money. I had a, uh, had a justice of the peace tell me, he goes, you know, I always take these cases in front of me instead of letting them pay by mail. And I tell them, look, I'll probably reduce this and that. But if I handle you going to school to get this off your license, our town makes, you know, 95% of that money. But if you just pay it by mail, we only get about 10% of that money. And I didn't understand what he was talking about. I did at the time, but I still remember. He said, so it's far better for me to hear that case, to cut him some leniency. And so I tell the police, stop handing out envelopes. Have them come to court. I'll cut them a way better deal. Explain that to them because they can still take the, the, the driver's course, still get the points off their license and get a reduced sentence. 
while paying money to the city, which is what everybody wants to do because we love them so fucking much. So see, there's things that we don't understand, but if, if you don't fight it, then, you know, I got a criminal speeding ticket. I laughed at the highway patrolman when he goes, this is criminal speeding. I was like, I thought criminal was chasing my neighbor with an ax. I go, I was doing 20 over the speed limit in a tunnel and the speed limit had just changed because it's a residential area. No one lives in this fucking tunnel. So, you know, he didn't want to hear it because, you know, he's, he's doing his fucking job, you know. And I don't argue with police and law enforcement because they're, they're busy. And, you know, why would I argue with you about the color of your house? It's your fucking business. You know, so I go to court. And, and they're, they're like, this is criminal. And, you know, it's like, like I fucking was Manson or something. So what I did was, uh, you know, I, I met with the, the attorney and, uh, I, I, I said, there were two people in there and I go, well, you know, I had my cruise control set and he goes, well, that's why you have a brake pedal. And I go, well, I didn't notice that it was kind of slight downhill grade and that the speed limit had, you know, changed as soon as I came out of the tunnel. There he was. And he's like, well, that's all fine and dandy, but you were going this fast and you did do this. So he goes, I'm going to reduce it to civil matter, which is way less points on your driver's license and it's not criminal. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you want to take this deal. And it's $250. And I wrote him a check and walked the fuck out. But you know what? They had to show up there and talk to me. <laughs> so did it cost them a little money? Sure. Are they fixed assets or liabilities or whatever you want to call them? Sure they are. They're part of the payroll. But that doesn't make it right. So there's ways we can cost them money and we do our due diligence and we show up at their meetings and we write them letters and make them answer us. And we take up the time of the council, whether it's the city council or the county council, and we talk to our sheriff and go, what can I do about this? And we start putting a drain on their system. Like Saul Alinsky said, for good purposes, we might have a chance of slowing the roll down the hill uh, of socialism, which is where we're heading. And the only way we're going to slow that roll is you or I do something. <laughs> so so Matt, uh, I guess it's Mr. Mr. A or somebody. Uh, give me a heart. It says nobody left, LOL. Well, you're here, so awesome that. Um, you know, I, I, I've done a, a live podcast on Tuesday, and then somebody said, well, Try Thursdays and, and see uh, how it works out and then try Wednesdays. So I'm just trying things out. And, uh, you know, depending on how long I go and how many comments I get and how many people actually listen, then I'll, I'll try to pick that day. Today worked out because my job fell apart so I can, I can ramble more. And, uh, you know. I don't know what to tell y'all. I mean, we need to, we need to fuck. We need to do something. I mean, you look at America, you look at everything. Like Mike Adams is talking about these vaccines and these task forces and stuff. And they're doing it without the authority of anything. Now, my county is pretty good. I have a good, fairly constitutional sheriff. And Ducey has decided to step up and start doing some good things. Uh, because we t there was a lot of serious talk about recall. So all of a sudden he realized, oh, I, I work for these people. I should fucking act like it. I think he should still be recalled just on principle. You know, he does all these good things, but he did a few bad things. And we always remember the bad thing they did. So get rid of them. Get a new one. Ah, beat them in the submission. So we need to be involved because, you know, if they do these vaccine SWAT teams or door knocks where they're being trained in Illinois how to violate private property. Well, now, if you read the state constitution, I'm sure you don't own private property anyway. They've done away and closed that loophole a long time ago. But like I told somebody one time, they said, hey, I have, I have a right to inspect your property. And I laughed and I said, well, you have the right to walk across the street in a, in a, in a, in a crosswalk on a green arrow. If you get hit by a semi, does it do you any fucking good? And he's like, no. And I go, well, if you come on my property without my permission again, 
and you get shot and buried in my back fucking two acres with tobacco, did it do you any good? Have some goddamn courtesy and call me next time. And we can talk. And, and we have to be that way. Does it seem bad? That seems kind of like a prickish thing to do, but that's only because we're raised that way. We've been raised to respect authority, whatever that means. And, and uh, you know, we're the, a lot of us are that generation of, you know, I mean, my kids are all Generation X where they hate authority, which is a good thing. They're gun owners. They study the law. But they, they, they buy into the eh, fucking attitude too. So we're the generation, if your kids are, you know, old enough and you maybe even have some grandkids or just say you have a family. If you don't do it for just to get that fucker off your property, do it for your children. Do it for your grandchildren. Because when, um, when America loses its liberty, it ain't coming back for way over a thousand years. So, you know, keep that in mind. I've said this before, and I'll say it one more time, and then I'll wrap it up. Rome had flowing water through their public facilities, basically. So when you sat down to crap, like a, like a, almost like an outhouse kind of thing, the water ran through the channel that you pooped in and peed in, and then down it went to God knows where. But anyway, it was out of town. Now, they didn't have 45 million people living in Rome, but they probably had a lot. But so it probably went into the lake or something. You know, nobody cared back then. Or maybe they were smart. They were pretty good water stewards. So maybe they, you know, had it run off somewhere else and dry out and leach out or something and, you know, whatever. But they had running water. They actually had running water in their fucking toilets. And when Rome fell, it was over a thousand years before the Queen of England, I can't remember which one, had a toilet installed in her castle. So it might sound funny to go a thousand years or three or four or 800 years without a, a fucking toilet. But the reality is that's just a toilet. America is a republic that was created purely by genius and inspiration whether it was god's hand or just because the founders were you know they were self-educated in all the constitutions going back thousand years you know not just the magna carta so many other ones and they they went through it and it was like constitutional republic 2.0 and it was perfect and we fucked it all up so when it crashes it won't come back because we don't have smart people anymore. So it'll take another thousand years before people get their head out of their ass and stop going, oh, gee, you know, what's the government going to do for me today? Well, well, who knows? Who cares, actually? So a thousand years is a long time for your grandkids to wait for freedom and liberty. Now, can we fix it? I've talked about this. I don't. I don't know if we can totally fix it because we have you know the 17th amendment which allowed us to elect our senators which really undermined the key cornerstone of a republic and representative government because we lost our representation at that moment when it used to be different how different mark well we would elect our representatives before jury mandarin it was you know your friend bob you went to school with or jane your old high school sweetheart. And they became your representative because they lived in your community. They understood mining or logging or ranching or farming or a rural area that had a lot of population. They understood the, the, the pains of that community. And then they went to the state and they, they talked about it. And all of those representatives talked about things. And then they kind of discussed through parliamentary procedures and said, well, we should tell the president um, no on these things because we created the presidency. We created this compact called America. We created the federal government. So we are all in agreement that the state of Arizona says, uh, fuck no. Like, yeah. So then they would appoint a senator and he would go to Washington 
and say yes or no on certain issues. And then if there was required, they would write the laws. They didn't just hand it to a fucking aide and let them fill in the blanks through committee. They wrote those laws and they said, this is how it's going to affect my state best. Well, then they did away with that. See, now senators are elected. The Electoral College is based on popular vote, which was never done before the 17th Amendment. Never. So as you study, you see there's a lot of inherent problems. You'd like to restore your old vehicle, and you can, but don't think you're not going to have to strip certain parts down and, and, and sandblast them and maybe rehone the cylinders or regrind the fucking valves. You might have to do some things and get some new parts. You might have to throw out the old fucking bullshit fuel injection system and go back to a, a carburation system or something because, you know, the fuel injection is just not working or whatever. You know, it's just a fucking analogy. So figure it out. But, you know, we can restore it and we can restore it really beautifully. Will it always be inherently broken? Yeah, it, it kind of will be. You know, there will be fractures in it that we will always see just like a vase that got broke but i think we can glue it back together and i and i think we're smart enough to do that whether we're committed is a whole different story so that's my bullshit rant for the day i want to thank everyone that is or is not here and uh you know i i'm looking at this app thing and it says call in but i think i'd have to 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 send somebody an email or somebody email it. I don't, I don't know how that works. You know what? I'll, 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 I'll try to figure it out. Well, maybe. Anyway, as always, I love you folks. And, and thank you for listening to, to everything. And, and I hope I brought some value you know, to your, your day, your time online, and, and did just some good. Um, I, I have, I've tried to publish these so they become a podcast, so then that way you can listen to them later, not just to, in case you miss this. And I, th I think I've got it right, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, anyone, you know, has expertise on this, email me, mark at prepperguy.com. And uh, I always get those emails, and I actually fucking read them. Um, so let's get involved. Let's fix our cities and our counties. Fuck the state. Fuck the feds. Because if you remember the pyramid properly, the people with the power are we the people. All the authority started from we the people. We created the states. The states created the federal government, and their authority was limited and defined by the Constitution. Nothing else stands if it's outside of that scope. And then the, the authority went to the states and then to the people. So, you know, you can look at it as a pyramid and maybe we appear to be at the bottom of the pyramid, but really we're the foundation of the pyramid. We have the biggest platform at the bottom because all authority rests on that. And then we built the second story called the state, a eh, little less impressive, and then the federal government at the top. Don't look at it as a, a penthouse or like the top of the pyramid, the top of the food chain, the top of the hill. It's not that way. They're just up there. It's like a, I guess, a, I don't know what they call it, like a corporate hierarchy, except the people at the top are just appointed, and we are all the shareholders. And if we get our shit together, we can just walk in, sweep through, fire every one of those motherfuckers, and start over. That's what the Constitution says we can do. We can disillusion ourselves from this compact called the Constitution. We can change it because we are parties to that Constitution because we created it. So, well, we created it. Okay, I'm going to back out of that. Um, we created the states that were party to the Constitution. So that's why I will continue to fly my state flag and the federal flag can fly under it because we are mommy and daddy and the federal government is junior in this story. So anyway, you guys have a great one. Talk to you all later. I'm going to end this thing now. Honestly, bye-bye. <laughs>